Before long, children, you'll go to high school. Hmm? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> They'll teach you what man has learned the accumulated knowledge of hundreds of thousands of years. Yes. Hmm. Now, do you know who first thought of the idea of high school? It's, uh, uh, the Department of Education. It's Charlemagne. It's grown-ups who thought up high schools to give us a hard time. <laughs> no, you're all wrong. It's Aristotle. Aristotle's a strange name. Was he Greek? Yeah, that's what he was. A Greek and one of the most brilliant. And he lived where? Well, he, it was, well, let's see. It was more than 23 centuries ago now, in Athens. Look here. I have decided to establish a high school. Young people will attend and be taught geography and geometry and history. No, Master, they won't attend. They'll think it's boring. Yes, of course they'll come, because they'll be learning in an amusing way, walking about. And today, such a school based on Aristotle's ideas is called peripatetic. A very bad what? Peripatetic. That means everybody walking about because his students weren't stuck sitting in one place. Yeah, they would learn walking about. That's a great idea. Why can't we do that? No. <laughs> 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 Aristotle was also the main teacher of Alexander the Great, who conquered the world. Ptolemy, construct a great port here, and there, on the island, a light. A beacon to sailors on the sea. Up there, near the port, you will have a temple erected in honor of the Muses, where scientists will meet and work together. Uh, so be it, Alexander, and we shall call it... Alexandria! Ptolemy succeeded Alexander and built a great library and his son Ptolemy II, a lighthouse, 40 meters high, one of the wonders of the world. Extraordinarily large ships were constructed. Just imagine, the mast was 10 stories high. And there were 2,000 oarsmen. Ships, the largest ever seen on the water. Uh, you're right, right, Your Majesty, but there's one small problem. I'm great, huh? Yes, what's that? Well, sure, she's the biggest, but no port is wide enough nor deep enough to accommodate her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the most extraordinary achievement of all was the building of the great library of Alexandria. Listen, Demetrius, this place is supposed to be the VBL. The VBL, Majesty? Very big library, but look around. Oh, uh, what do you mean? What's supposed to be in a library? Uh, mm, I got it. Uh, books are... Just so. And where are they, then? Do you see any? Uh... The only text that we have is this, by Plato. And it's not even an original. It's a copy. Look here, Demetrius. We need others. Get them any way you can. Any way I can, Majesty. <laughs> you, Xenodotus, you will board that ship. It's going to Athens. You will obtain some of Aristotle's original texts. Then you will go to Pergamus and bring back texts by Hippocrates. Meanwhile, we will inspect each and every ship. <laughs> 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 Who? What's so funny? What are you laughing at? Uh, tell me. A comedy by Aristophanes. It's really good. The birds, it's called. By order of King Ptolemy, I requisitioned this text to make it available for study at the VBL. The what? The VBL, the very big library. Yeah, it's all right. You will return it. Yes, right. And on time. Lots of books here. Say, I told you have a copy of the Epidemics by Hippocrates. Um, 
Man, I have the original. I'll take it. But I won't sell it. I inherited it from my grandfather. I'll get you ten talents in gold. Mm. Twenty golden talents. I wouldn't part with it for anything in the world, but say thirty talents? Go get it. Here's your gold. I assure you, Xenodotus, I have no need of money. Tell Demetrius I have no intention of giving up my original text by Democrates. The answer is no, definitely. <laughs> no, Xenodotus, I never sell my books, but I'll be pleased to lend them. You might have them copied. <laughs> Good work, Demetrius. Now it's beginning to look like a real VBL. You'll see people will be talking about my library. Come and see how they're copying them. Uh-huh. I think you'll be very pleased. Good work. Naturally, we would rather keep the originals and give back copies. Yes, we'd much rather do that. <laughs> <laughs> We already have over 400,000 books here, sire. All the works of the Greek philosophers and scientists and the life of Alexander. The sacred books of Egypt. Chaldeans' horoscopes. Now that's what I call a VBL. <laughs> it's even better than Aristotle's school. Greetings, I am Sestibus, engineer. And inventor. Look, Ptolemy, hmm? This statue draws a line on papyrus. The line represents passing time, you see? That's marvelous. How does it work, eh? As you see, water flows regularly and pushes up the floater, which in turn fills up the compartment which gets heavier and turns the drum on which the line is drawn. Quite ingenious, Estemius. Any other inventions? This pump, for example, it brings water from a well without lowering a bucket. <laughs> Not only clever, but useful. Go on, what else? I'm working on this invention, an instrument for measuring any differences in heat. I call it a thermometer. You see, just the heat of my hands makes the liquid rise in the tube. Amusing. And what's that one? I'm not sure what this one's going to do. The piston compresses the air in the tube, thus creating a force. A force? Air doesn't have any force. Pull this lever and you'll see if it has any. Here. You did that on purpose! You have affronted my dignity! You'll pay for that! That isn't exactly what I intended. It sure held a lot of water. For centuries, the library of Alexandria was to grow larger. Very soon, it would contain more than a million different works. Then, in the year 47, before our era. are about to invade Alexandria. A major portion of the library would go up in flames. A tremendous loss for science. Some of the greatest texts went up in flames. And all the scientists were killed? No, no, Rome would spare them. Oh, good. For another two centuries, Alexandria was a province of Rome and was to stay the scientific center of the world. Now I'll tell you about two of those scientists, Ptolemy, whose maps of the sky were the standard for many centuries, and Hero. Who knows about Hero of Alexandria? He was surely a genius. One of the most remarkable inventors of all time. You see, Hero, the Earth's round and the sun goes around it. The Earth is round, I agree, Ptolemy. But are you sure the sun goes around? 
The sun and all the planets move around Earth. I even worked out their orbits. Mm-hmm. It's all very complicated. Have to consider it. Greetings. Are you new here? Yes, we are scientists from Rome. My name is Tignius. I am an engineer. He is Bottas, an astronomer. We came to see how you work here. Perhaps we can give you a hand. I, too, am an engineer. My friend here, Ptolemy, is an astronomer and geographer. <laughs> what a crazy thing. It looks like the Earth's round. The hey, Earth is that? round. It's a sphere. The Earth's as flat as a millstone. We all know that. You've only to look around you. Just where do you come from? These days it's well known the Earth is round. We are Romans, and Rome is the strongest. So if we say the Earth's flat, then that's the way it is. Your empty head's going to be flat if you go on talking them. Don't go on. It's obvious they're backward. Backward? Backward? You'll find out if I'm backward. I'll show you. If you're a scientist, what have you invented? Wanna know? Ow, ow, oh. Yeah. <laughs> a cup and ball game. An old Greek idea. Goes back to Plato's time. And you, hero of Alexandria, you say you're an engineer. What did you invent? Oh, a few gadgets, you could say. Lately, a working steam machine. A steam machine? What's that? Here, I'll show you. That's not a machine. No, watch this. <laughs> Oh, it's the pressure of the steam that forces it around. You see, it works. Yes, only it doesn't do anything. The principle of a steam machine could have a great many uses. <laughs> they destroyed your machine. Oh, I'll make another one, even more advanced. Mm -hmm. We insist on seeing Caius, governor of Alexandria. Mm, so your complaint against the Greeks in the museum at... Uh, <laughs> yes, Caius, especially one named Hero. He damages equipment. The other, Ptolemy, he maintains the Earth is round. And what is the Earth? Square. Flat, naturally. Naturally. Let us go and see the Greeks. <laughs> I am Caius, governor of Alexandria. Apparently, you have invented a steam device. Yes, they destroyed it. No? And just what use is uh, your thing? Uh, it's to master the energy in heat. Look, either you demonstrate your machine is a useful purpose, or else you'll find yourself usefully <laughs> rowing a Roman galley. <laughs> oh, hello. I am Caius, Roman governor of Alexandria. You must show respect. But I respect everyone. What are you doing? It's a map of the known world. Uh, and Rome? Where is Rome on your map? Mm. Hmm. Uh, your map is no good. Rome is at the center of the world, not a speck among all the others. That depends on how you look at it. That's how I look at it. Now listen, you two are a nuisance. You, you will make a machine that does something huh? useful. You draw a map with Rome at the oh. center. Otherwise, you're going to be pulling oars. Right, boys, got to do whatever a Roman says. <laughs> oh. 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 Ah. Oh. 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 The governor said that the project would get underway. And so you will dig here. Mm hmm I really hope your device works. Nothing to worry about. You'll see. Well, Hero, have you done anything useful with your steam machine? Is it useful to open the door of this temple? With your machine? It's the best one yet, stupid. <laughs> I don't see the opening doors. There's a man inside. You're cheating! See for yourself. Oh, hey, oh, oh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. 
I'm beginning to think you are a true scientist, hero of Alexandria. No, 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 that's a trick, that's a trick. The doors are now going to close up. You can try to restrain them. I ordered my steam machine to let you go. No, you are clever, hero. You go on inventing machines that are just as clever as this one is. <laughs> well, and if you were map with Rome at the center? Hmm. I see, I see. You see, this is the Colosseum, the circus in Rome. It's right in the middle, right? Hmm. And where's the rest of the world? Well, according to what you said, Rome is so large and the rest of the world is so small, wave and show it. And that? And that? They are the sun and the moon revolving around the Colosseum. Hmm. As for that, it's all Greek to me. Is he trying to put one over on me? Of course he is. He's not serious. The earth is flat. The Greeks are making fun of us. You two are getting on my nerves. If you're a scientist, then prove it, or, or it's to the galley. Uh -huh. Good job. How'd you manage to open up the temple doors like that? It was easy. Fire heats the air trapped in an airtight container, increasing the air pressure, forcing out the water through the tube into an enclosed container. The added weight pulls on the rope connected to the doors, which then open. When the fire is extinguished, pressure reduces in the airtight container and water draws back in. The counterweight closes the doors. Easy as rolling off a log. Quite simple. <laughs> Caius, I must have more men. It's too heavy and we'll never make it. I'll send you additional slaves. It's not more men who are needed, it's levers that are needed. A few men will be able to lift very great weights. Roman engineers have interesting ideas. <laughs> there, you see. You managed to lift it only two feet. We have to bring it up 30 feet. Tell me how you'll do that. Uh, with other levers, plenty of them, higher and higher. How do you intend supporting all of them? With much stronger beams, get the idea? <laughs> with your system, each stone is going to take all day. All right, you good for nothings. What are you waiting for? That marble is real Carrara. It cost a lot. I will find you the next time. Get me, hero. Hello, Caius. I see there's a problem. <laughs> oh? Hmm. Mm -mm. I've a solution. As it happens, I've just invented the Barakos. The what? what? What's that? You'll see. Now look. I turn the big crank, which in turn puts the cogwheel into motion. A smaller wheel transmits the movement, which has much more force, and so on. That's it. At the other side of the barracos, the pulley moves very slowly. That's where we attach the ropes. First, I need a tower. He's right. It's turning there and there. Bartas! Uh, yes, Tignus. Bartas, you know what you're doing? Cranking the machine, Tignus. Turning all the wheels, Bartas. Nicely put, Tignus. And you're crushing my finger, Bartas. No, oh! Ah! Ah! I didn't do it on purpose. Ah! Roman's going for jogging. The tower's ready. Ready? Okay, let's go. That's it, easy. These Greeks, they certainly know what they're doing. Hmm. Hero? Look here, I think I found a way to draw more accurate maps. Watch. Naturally, Ptolemy's maps contain certain errors. But all the same, he is the father of modern geography. 14 centuries later, Christopher Columbus used his original ah. maps, and 15 centuries later, Copernicus would still be under his influence. Ah, ah the astrolabe. What about this instrument for observing the sky? Hero, you're not listening. What are you doing? Observing, as you say. The passing scenery. 
That's my cousin, Clea. Oh, well, I was looking at the lyre she's playing. Come on, it's time you met her. So you learn how much you think you have to do? Three brain donkey, a fourteen brain donkey, and a fifteen brain donkey. Hello, cousin. I'd like you to meet my friend, Hero. He's an engineer. He'll invent anything you want. Uh, hello, Clea. I, well, I, I really am. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, Hero. Very nice music you play on that thing. It's a lyre. Well, you play on it by plucking the strings. But she's found a better way. It's prettier when you strike the strings lightly. Yes, a good idea. You'll see, Clea. He'll come up with a new invention mm. for you. You can go to jail for defacing camel. Mm. A brand new camel, never been ridden. The more I think about it, the angrier I get. You buy him. Now, now, oh. tell each other. Here are a few coins. Give the camel a wash job. My friend's a bit distracted. No, <laughs> don't worry. In case you get another message, there's the other side of the camel. <laughs> oh, sick in his head. <laughs> Isn't your friend a bit odd? He left just like that without a word. That's how he is when he's an idea. He's lost in his thoughts, but he's nice. You want to see him again? Oh, we might run into each other. Oh, that's so nice. What is it? It's uh, uh, a bit like a lyre or a harp, but with small hammers that come down upon the strings. I did it for... Uh, you said the other mm -hmm. day, anyway, yes, I... Yes, what? It was for you that I invented it. Oh, thank you, Hero. La, 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 Bravo, la, la, Claire. Quite la, nice. His one interest in life is inventing, and when he invents, he forgets all, even his new wife. Let's go one more way, say. One more. Philomene Hero were to be among the last scientists of the School of Alexandria. The glorious period of Greek science would last nearly a thousand years. The magnificent library of Alexandria was pillaged by the Romans. <laughs> the powerful Roman Empire in its turn was to fall. In 391, when Alexandria was part of the Byzantine Empire... Destroy the library and all the workrooms! It's a place of heat. Forward! of darkness would follow the disappearance of the Greek school, but its discoveries form the basis of our science today. Because the torch of knowledge will be picked up, other scientists were to live adventures just as exciting. You'll see, you'll see. <laughs>